Okay, I am finishing up here. Um, keep it very wet when you're trying to mix in these highlights so they do look like they blend into the background. Notice I'm using a very fine brush now for the detail work. And I'm really adding in the highlights. As you can see, it's gotten a, kind of a light in quite a few areas. I'll probably go in and add some more white here. But again, I'm going to show you um, this technique of, it's really wet on wet technique, but um, broken color. When you take one color and break it with another color, remember to do your sides. Notice my sides here. Yeah. So you want to keep your sides. You don't have to make them perfect, but you do want the painting to continue around in gallery wrap paintings. Museum wrap paintings, you would paint the entire side white or black or maybe in this case a brown. But this is gallery wrap, basically, for people who either don't want to buy a frame or they will buy a frame later or something like that. So you can hang it on the wall without a frame if you do this. Now I'm mixing in the dark orange with the light orange. First I'll put in the dark orange. And notice that your acrylics blend. Notice how I, um, the, the highlights, I can, uh, I can do this edge now because I've already done the stairs, so they're in the background. If I do areas that have too much of a highlight in it or don't look like bark, I can come back in again and break my color with a darker color. It pays to have your paintings mixed in advance. All I'm doing here is, let me add the little details here, trying to get the bark as fine as possible. Because you will see in the original, I, I'm not being that true to the colors here. I did add in a little bit of pink to bring in that background. Uh, a little bit of pink here and there. just to tie in the foreground with the background. And then once I get a nice mixture of colors, I come in and let the tiny little bit of white make the bark seeing and look so harmonious and sparkle and do all those wonderful things that we love with Impressionist paintings. This is what we love about Impressionist paintings is it gives it that sparkle. So think about it, how many brush strokes do you think are in this? Maybe a thousand? So work fast and just da 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 da, almost like stipple, uh, but tiny little brush strokes. And let your, um, let your painting uh, decide, let your picture, whatever image you choose, decide on what kind of brush strokes. Like notice on the rocks, I use thicker brush strokes and again, built up from dark to light. Uh, but in other areas, you know, texture-wise, uh, remember you want a focal point in your painting. So, of course, here my focal point would be the stairs. And, like, um, after this dries, I'll go in and add a little bit of white highlights to the stairs. Notice I kept the trees light in the back. I might even go in and add a, even a lighter white here so they blend more in. Maybe a pinkish white so it blends more in with the background. And I added quite a bit of white to the highlights here, but not down here, because I'm saying this is farther away than this. This is where I'm going to have my high contrast. This is where I'm going to have low contrast, and it's all going to blur together. Think about it. Impressionist paintings are like it's out of focus. Monet, which is probably the most famous of all your Impressionist paintings, actually is some of his most beautiful work he did when he was almost completely blind 
yes, bone ale almost like the eyesight in old age, very old age. And we have at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston some of his older, later works when he was losing his eyesight, and they're just absolutely beautiful. And you can see there's one called The Bridge. You can look for it online, uh, and you can barely see the bridge. It's out, out, of, out of focus. So if you wear glasses, take your glasses off. Yeah, and uh, that foggy uh, impression is what we're going for with our impressionist landscape.